Archive Document Item Number SCP-3004 Object Class Neutralized Special Containment Procedures the threat posed by SCP-3004 has remained neutralized. Containment of SCP-3004 is focused solely on interception of artifacts that point towards the existence of the Setladi. To that end, archaeological sites in Ireland and Wales should be monitored closely. Artifacts are to be confiscated, catalogued, and incinerated. All SCP-3004-related matters are to be dealt with by the Theology Department. Director Clark is to be notified immediately if any events thought to be SCP-3004 related occur. SCP-3004-1 is believed to have been destroyed or otherwise deterred from the material plane and no longer requires containment. Any information found regarding the existence of the Cicadetta Lucilenta is to be destroyed and civilians involved amnesticized due to its connection to SCP-3004. Description SCP-3004 refers to a series of anomalous events linked to the rituals of a druidic cult known as the Setladi, or the Singers. They were located primarily in Ireland during the 15th to early 19th century. It is known that their worship revolved around the life cycle of the now extinct Cicadetta Lucilenta. Footnote 1, also known as the Stained Glass Cicada. Due to the combined actions of various antecedent groups to the Foundation, including the Vatican's Congregation for Otherworldly Acts and the Royal Society for the Imprisonment of Abnormality, all knowledge of SCP-3004 and the Singers was destroyed in order to contain SCP-3004-1. As SCP-3004 was thus destroyed, the SCP-3004-1 entity ceased all activity. SCP-3004 events centered around imagery associated with the rites of the singers. They occurred most commonly during a celebration surrounding a child's entrance into adulthood, which was signified by the first loss of primary teeth. These events were theorized to lead to the entrance of their deity, dubbed SCP-3004-1, into local time space. SCP-3004 events are understood to have been the result of SCP-3004-1 attempting to act upon the material world. It is unclear as to when SCP-3004-1 began to react to the beliefs of the singers. While there are signs of varied SCP-3004 events, there are few reports that still exist. Artwork relating to SCP-3004 events show Cicadetta lucilenta coming from the facial orifices, causing asphyxiation in many. A written record details the sighting of an anomalously large instance of Cicadetta lucilenta, believed to be SCP-3004-1, appearing in the sky, the sight of which caused painful boils in those who witnessed it, along with symptoms resembling radiation sickness. Despite this, the singers were said to have continued their rituals in the face of SCP-3004 events, which was seen as necessitating their destruction. SCP-3004-1 was an entity which interacted with the singers through their rituals, causing SCP-3004 events. Little is known about the nature of SCP-3004-1. It is theorized to have been a thought form or an extra-dimensional being that, through happenstance, responded to the rituals of the singers. There is no data that exists to point towards SCP-3004-1 being anything greater than a level 3 fistophage entity. Footnote 2. Greek Faith Eater Archived Report J. Clark, S.J. Due to the intimate nature of this subject, i.e. all who read this will surely, Christ willing, know me, and I them, and its current neutralized state, I'm going to keep the academic hot air to a minimum. I have no desire or need to impress any of you. You're my colleagues, and I think we all understand that there's no need to hide what this is beneath jargon and posturing. 3004-1 is a deity, if you wish to define a thing as such. A deity is a creature of law, ritual, and belief. Certainly its existence doesn't shake my faith. Nothing has, and I doubt a curious thought form attracted to cicadas and greenery will shake it yet. It is not infinite, and it is not all-knowing. Quite the opposite. Its limits are apparent. Cut off from a few rituals and direct believers, 3004-1 ceased all activity. There have been no resurgence events. Nary a peep. 
Truthfully, what little we have left of the history of the Sedlati, the singers in the vulgar English, is quite interesting. Based around the Cicadetta Lucilenta and its apparent rebirth and what have you, it wasn't just a fringe druidic sect. This was nationwide. They were respected members of society. There are signs of them in Wales and Scotland. So, of course, before the inevitable violence, the Catholic Church, in its ever-ineffable wisdom, may the Lord God forgive me for blaspheming his one true church on this earth, of course, etc., etc., did attempt to bring them into the fold. Before the complete eradication of the Setlati from the face of history in an unprecedented act of violence and usage of anomalous objects that many would see as foolhardy, maybe even horribly unwise, may the O5 Council forgive me for this slight against the forefather of the Foundation, of course, etc., etc., the parishes in certain rural areas of Ireland seemed more singer than Christian. This is all we know. This is all that's left. The eradication of their rituals, of their culture, of their impact on Ireland and the world at large was snuffed out with an alarming thoroughness. Not unprecedented, certainly, but consider the fact that this happened in the late 1700s. This was the desperate act of an early incarnation of what we all became. Foolhardy and harsh, yes, but I truly cannot say that we would not have done the same, given what little we know of 3004-1's effects on our material plane. Of course, given the English view of the Irish at the time, it is not overly cynical to imagine that the Royal Society relished the chance to destroy the culture and the impact of the Setlati. So total was their destruction that the extinction of the Cicadetta Lucilenta, charmingly known as the Stained Glass Cicada, became an opportunity to even wipe their sacred animal from the memory of man. The deforestation of Ireland certainly led to the death of their species, but one must wonder if their extinction came from a more direct source. This of course is all merely speculation. Maybe the sacred animal merely followed their deity. Certainly, it speaks to the fear they felt if the Royal Society and the Congregation would enact the destruction of an entire animal species. A harmless creature, cousin to the new forest cicada. Perhaps they feared that cut off from ritual, 3004-1 would manifest through them. The idea, certainly, is not ridiculous. There is a strong connection between belief and fact. Perhaps their fear would have even made it so. Given the fact that the Setlati were upright members of society, one can imagine that the resonance within their rituals that 3004-1 felt were mere happenstance. In my opinion, there's no reason to assume that this entity is at all related to the Sitladi in their beliefs. Something in them, I hypothesize, spoke to this thing, and it acclimated itself to their belief system. Think of it as something floating in a place close to ours, maybe layered above or beneath. Perhaps there are many creatures like it there. I doubt that an entity like this would exist alone, although I have no proof of this besides the certitude of my gut. Through these repetitions of behavior, through these beliefs, it was able to act on our plane, and it became what it was molded by. There's also no reason to assume 3004-1 to be malevolent. It's disingenuous to think of such an entity in terms of good and evil. Given the focus the Setlati had on life and death, along with the imagery of Christ the Savior's death on the cross, it stands to reason that the 3004-1 manifestations would be violent. It spoke the only language it knew, the language of blood, wood, glass, and sacrifice. Perhaps the brutality of its manifestations, of the events associated with the 3004 rituals, could have been the 3004-1 entity interpreting the very real subjugation of the Irish people at the time. There's no reason to assume that the lives of its followers would not be just as important to the entity as their rituals. Certainly, the language of death and rebirth of the cicada, of the scourging at the pillar present in the rites of Roman Catholicism, especially in the era of its neutralization, and what is theorized to have been the rituals of the Setlati could have lent to all of the violence, to the harshness of it all. Faced with their god, a terrifying thing that sowed discord, there is no record of their reaction. There is only record of their destruction. One would imagine them to have been horrified, Yet, to have necessitated their destruction, they very well may have followed the entity's whims, however alien. No proof has been found to point toward either hypothesis. But again, this is all conjecture. We simply do not know enough to take any approach to this object other than making sure it never comes back. 
I do not believe that we would be unable to deal with something such as this, given the current technologies available to us, but it is best not to awaken a sleeping giant, as it were. Given what we have here, I can offer no other advice. Whenever we rarely find something that our predecessors missed, we will catalog it, learn what we can about what we destroyed, and move on to other things. Current Document Item Number SCP-3004 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures All communities that could possibly support an SCP-3004 event are to be monitored for uncharacteristic rises in death rate and attendance at places of worship. If a community is shown to have been the host of an SCP-3004 event or events, all afflicted civilians are to be amnesticized. Any injuries or deaths that occur because of these events are to be given applicable cover stories. At no point is an individual known to be involved in an SCP-3004 event to be considered for Foundation employment, D-Class or otherwise. MTFY-99, Alter Boys, is tasked with responding to SCP-3004 events in progress, where possible, and stopping them by any means necessary. All sightings of SCP-3004-2 are to be reported to the Theology Department. Images of SCP-3004-2 are to be dismissed as hoaxes or deleted as necessary. All instances of SCP-3004-2 found in the wild are to be destroyed to avoid future SCP-3004 events. As of Project Site-C Lux, there are to be no attempts to track SCP-3004-2 instances. Any attempt is to be made to destroy them before their disappearance. There is to be no further attempt at containing SCP-3004-1. SCP-3004-1 will be contained through the cleanup of SCP-3004 events and the destruction of SCP-3004-2 instances. Currently, all containment is focused upon reducing the effects of SCP-3004 events which have already occurred. If SCP-3004-1's entrance into the material plane is unavoidable and inevitable, Protocol Demnatio at Bestius is to be enacted. Description SCP-3004 refers to a series of anomalous events that occur in Roman Catholic, Eastern Catholic, Anglican, and Episcopalian communities. SCP-3004 events occur without any patterns connected to population or demographics other than religion. While SCP-3004 events are varied and have few similarities to unite them, the presence of SCP-3004-2 at each event proves a connection. SCP-3004 events are rituals carried out by otherwise non-anomalous individuals in their place of worship. Despite showing a great divergence from Christian norms of worship, individuals involved in an SCP-3004 event show great hesitation to stop engaging in the ritual, even those that involve self-harm. All individuals attending the place of worship for that purpose will not stop the rituals involved, even if their actions go against previously held morals. Individuals who normally exhibit entomophobia exhibit no fear of the SCP-3004-2 instances involved in the ritual. Deaths that occur as a result of SCP-3004 rituals will be categorized as death by natural causes, regardless of what was done to the individual. Those who witness an SCP-3004 ritual express a renewed interest in their chosen faith and seek to convince friends and family to accompany them to their place of worship. Examples of SCP-3004 rituals include the slaughter of a child bearing traditional stigmata wounds out of which crawled instances of SCP-3004-2. The child was killed when the officiating priest bit out the child's jugular. SCP-3004-2 instances crawled en masse from the wounds up to six hours after the child's death. The forcible removal of the officiating priest's teeth by twelve children. The children and the priest were then seen to vomit instances of SCP-3004-2. The teeth were served in the place of communion wafers later on during the mass. The violent castration of every male who had reached puberty. Scrotal tissues were gathered and disseminated amongst the faithful and worn around the neck as scapulars. The castrated individuals then mimicked the cry of an unidentified cicada, believed to be the Cicadetta lucilenta, before many succumbed to blood loss. SCP-3004-2 instances were observed carrying off discarded testes. 
A visibly pregnant woman was chosen from the congregation and brought to the altar where she laid and proceeded to give birth to over 60 instances of SCP-3004-2 and a stillborn infant wearing a wooden crown. The crown was burnt and the body consumed. SCP-3004-2 instances resemble the extinct Cicadetta lucilenta, albeit with a much more colorful wing pattern than what has been described. Despite appearing in every way alive, SCP-3004-2 instances are primarily made of wood and glass. It is unclear, currently, if SCP-3004-2 instances are the cause of SCP-3004 events or vice versa. During an SCP-3004 event, SCP-3004-2 instances are observed in prominent parts of the ritual. After a ritual, SCP-3004-2 instances exit the church and disappear after flying at least 600 meters away. This disappearance is hypothesized to be the SCP-3004-2 instances returning to SCP-3004-1, either to feed it or perhaps be given further orders. It is believed that SCP-3004-2 is the mechanism by which SCP-3004-1 collects belief or faith in order to consume. It is unclear as to why SCP-3004-1 in its former incarnation did not seem to require the SCP-3004-2 instances. As of Project Site C Lux, it is now known that SCP-3004-1 created the instances of SCP-3004-2 as a replacement for the Cicadetta Lucilenta. SCP-3004-1 is the entity that controls SCP-3004-2 instances and is believed to be fed by the SCP-3004 rituals. SCP-3004-1 is a level 6 pistophage entity that exists in a dimension that exists partially within baseline reality but primarily above it. From within this dimension, it is currently unable to directly manifest itself into the plane of existence. However, if given enough belief from the SCP-3004-2 instances, SCP-3004-1 will be able to enter the current baseline reality, which would cause an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario due to the brutality of SCP-3004 events. SCP-3004-1 views itself as the deity worshipped under the umbrella of Christianity. Due to this, it is theorized that the beliefs of Christianity-based religions, especially Anglicanism and Roman Catholicism, melded with the beliefs of the Setlati in such a way that their destruction caused SCP-3004-1 to feed on the beliefs of the only remaining familiar group. If SCP-3004-1 enters the baseline reality, Protocol Demnatio et Bastius will be enacted. This will involve the usage of Thaumiel objects and mass amnestics which will serve to erase Christianity from the historical record. Cut off from its food supply, this is theorized to be an act that would fully neutralize SCP-3004-1. Addendum it has been noted that SCP-2852 has ceased its appearances after the first recorded SCP-3004 event. Due to the similarities of their manifestations, this is hypothesized to be related. Currently, all personnel assigned to SCP-2852 have been reassigned to SCP-3004. Site C Lux Report For the record, my name is Agent Timothy Lutterman. I'm a member of Mobile Task Force Sigma-25. We've always called ourselves Ghostbusters. To be honest, I don't understand why. If anything, we become ghosts. Sorry, rambling. I'm just coming down from all the stuff we pump ourselves with to be able to go outside. Still seeing... trails, you know? Still kinda freaked out from all that shit. For official record, MTFS-25 is the result of Project Sightsee which was a project to basically use astral projection in order to better uh, contain troublesome skips. That kind of deal. You know, uh, things no human or drone could ever do, which happens more often in our business than you'd guess. Project Site C Lux was utilizing Site C technology and esoterica to, well, check out the big bug. So before I went in, I read the report on 3004. Fucked up stuff. The kind of stuff that gets your stomach in a knot just to imagine. You don't understand fear until you're a disembodied soul floating around and within and above and below a monstrosity beyond your reckoning. <sighs> the method was easy enough. 
I don't know how they did it, but they captured a 3004-2. All they did was let it out, and I latched onto it. Like, well, a, a soul bug. Not, you know, bug as in those things, but bug as in listening into things you shouldn't. Inside, where it lives, it's empty. There's only it, and there's the bugs. Except, they're not the bugs as you see them. They're the bugs as it sees them. And there's so many colors, they just kind of look like some Jackson Pollock nightmare smearing all over the darkness. But it's not darkness. It's nothing. This thing is within nothing. I can't describe it, but there's nothing else but it and the bugs. And me, I guess. I'd say it was cold, but cold is a feeling. Sure, cold is a lack of heat, but this is a lack of anything. It's hard to look at it, at 3004-1. It's too big. It's just waking up. I realized that when I saw it. You know when you half wake up and lay in bed for a few hours before getting up? Uh, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just a depressive. But that's what this thing is. All of this is idle. The 3004 events are it hitting the snooze button and staring at the ceiling. I don't want it to wake. That's all I'm thinking. And then it sees me. It's a big bug. And it's an old man. And it's a cicada on the cross. And then it's stained glass and wood stretching infinite. It's too many things to try to pick out at once. It's like if someone played all the slides in a slideshow at once. Overlapping. It hurts so bad to look at it. And then it talks, and it all hurts worse. A thing you need to realize is that it's impossible to speak to these things with words. You don't hold a conversation. They beam thoughts, concepts, worlds at you. And you gotta sift through the shit to get to something meaningful. I've met some talkative ones, but this was something else. This was too much. It thinks it's God. Not a God, but God, God. It was so happy to see me, but that joy was nothing I wanted to be a part of. It was all blood and teeth. It sees what we have. It sees what we believe. I think it thinks it's giving us what we want. It, it doesn't understand metaphor. It doesn't understand that we don't resurrect. It asked me if I missed it. I don't think we ever neutralized it. Shit, maybe we did. But when it went to sleep, I think it thought it was a hibernation, or like, a birth. Like it laid an egg and made itself. Maybe it got to thinking that it was even more of a cicada than before. And when it came back, it gave us our bugs back. It basically said you're welcome. It's not exactly protocol, I guess, to talk back to these things. Especially something like this. But I tried to tell it that we didn't want them. That it all hurts us. I don't think it hurt it. It didn't want to hear it. I feel like it smiled, and that was when its mouth opened. It's hard to explain the sight of it. Like a rainbow opening up and out, and inside there's colors you haven't ever seen. And you'd shit yourself if you were a body. And then I was a communion host, falling through its maw. I was the wine too. It took of me and it ate. I fell through it, and it was endless. Lots of… Uh, pain, but not the kind you'd be able to understand. A pain of the soul. It was prodding, searching me for new things. I don't think it gets too much from where it is. Like looking at a TV with bad reception. It was so happy to read me. I felt its feelers all over my first girlfriend. I felt its teeth digging into my 10th birthday. It lapped up my every memory of every mass I've ever went to. And I went to a lot. Theology major, you know. Probably why they picked me. I don't know why it's alone. Father Clark's report said this creature would be one of many. But there wasn't anything else. It was too big for there to be anything else. It was all space and all time. I think all I did was feed it. I think it got more ammo from me. I don't know. All I can say is that we shouldn't send anyone else there. You can't argue with something like that. And we know enough. Don't go back. We don't want this thing to learn any more than it has. And it has so much history already. 
the thing I'm most scared of. If this isn't God, I think it might become. It's confident. And, well, it's all there is. I looked, and it was all there was. Majority decision on protocol Domnatio ad bestias. While working on the Ethics Committee, I have always sought to live up to the morals instilled in me through the catechisms of Roman Catholicism, and it is a very hard thing to be a Roman Catholic, in the Foundation and outside. This isn't due to any complicated tenets, nor harshness, but it is trying to believe in something that you know has caused undue harm. It gnaws at you. Protocol Damnatio ad bestias, then, will allow for a cleaner slate. Judaism will remain untouched. Islam will only lose one of its prophets, nothing too damning. But Christianity, and all it has done, all it has caused, will be gone. I don't relish this, I, I wish it could be any other way, but the 3004 events are becoming more common. The big bug sticks its head through the topsoil, and we will cut it out at the root. It is impossible to say for certain what will happen. We don't know if we'll be undone, or if there will simply be a deletion. We don't know if something will fill the void, or if there will be a world with a great gap. Even then, it is better than the world that will come into being if we stay. The Cicada God is coming, and it doesn't know the difference between life and death. Metaphor and simile don't translate well where it is. Part of me relishes what we're doing to it in a kind of petty way. There is a non-zero chance that the thing devoured my lord. Of course, if the Lord God could be devoured, he would not be my lord and god. But still, the humanity in me cries out for the blood of that which killed him. We will starve it. The preliminary tests have been concluded. Protocol Domnatio ad bestias will be enacted as soon as possible. And to stave off this devourer of God, we will throw one of our own to the lions, to be torn asunder and to tear asunder to be damned and to damn, to act as a perpetual lock on humanity, to stave off all belief even close to what the cicada can eat. To use less poetic terms, a suitable candidate has been contacted, a Roman Catholic reality bender. Ethics wouldn't allow us to put someone into this situation without their choice, without their understanding of what will happen to them. And he took the mantle. They say the lions are beautiful. Twelve machines, each the peak of techno-eschatology. And they really do look hungry and prone. Black carbon and shining metal with lights that are prismatic no-colors that dazzle. And he will go in between them. They will open his brain, his mind. All Christianity, all that he knows and doesn't, will be obliterated. The Lord God sent Jesus Christ, his only Son, to suffer and die on the cross. And we, the Foundation, will throw one of our own to the lions for all eternity to undo all Christ died for. An eternity of suffering to erase a sacrifice. It isn't a fair price, but nothing is. The Holy Father, as you may well know, recently allowed for another road to sainthood. This is, of course, dying to save others. This isn't martyrdom, which is merely dying for the faith. But this is eternally dying for all of humanity all that there ever will be and has been. This will be the last and greatest saint of Christianity, and he will not be remembered. Before the eternal lions feed upon him, remember, for as long as you can, the eternal life of Saint Jude the Damned, bulwark against darkness. Hopefully, this next world will be better. May God forgive me. If this is a sin, I will burn along with the last saint. Bridget Callahan, Child of God. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to Everborn, Joe Light, The Bone Man, Brody Hartman, Rubbishbin69, and Doomsday LLC, Prince and Design. If you'd like to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.